The scenery is spectacular, but trekking in the jungle here in the Darien Gap on Colombia's border with Panama is no walk in the park. It's a huge challenge for these migrants. It's a coral snake. If it bites you, you're dead. I'm tired. It's really hard. These men, women and children are making the journey because they feel they have little more to lose. The migrants help each other as they progress. Driven by the dream of reaching the United States. This is their story. At 6 a.m. on their first day, they gathered at this camp on the edge of the jungle run by a Colombian drug trafficking cartel and were given final instructions before setting off. Watch out, don't play Superman. Women who are pregnant must tell us. Some women give birth during their journey and the baby does not survive. Among those taking the journey, Fernanda and her daughter and Manuel. They're from Ecuador and became friends on a boat to Colombia. They're aware of the risks. I know there are crocodiles and that we'll see corpses along the way. If you break a leg or you have a fracture, it's over. There'll be no help and you'll have to stay here. It's walk or die. But the worst thing would have been for us to stay where we were. The group of hundreds of migrants begins what is a gruelling marathon that will last days. The Pan-American Highway goes from the far north of Alaska to the southernmost tip of the Americas, more than 25,000 kilometers of road, except at Darien Gap, linking South America to Central America. There is no road for 106 kilometers. Instead, there's just jungle. The migrants have paid $350 each to the drug trafficking cartel to make the journey. That's a huge amount for these people who have already traveled a long way to get to this point. I come from Haiti. I got a plane from there to Chile. If we get to the US, life will be a lot easier for us. They walk 10 hours a day. Fernanda is struggling. And so is Manuel but they remain as determined as ever. I don't have any choice. I can't go back to Ecuador because of the problems. On the third day, they reach Colombia's border with Panama. There's no customs office here, just a sign. We've made it. I'm happy, but so tired. We've really made progress. Come on, let's move on. Fernanda that evening explained why she left Ecuador. Look at my scars. My ex-boyfriend cut me. He slashed my arms. It was clear then that he was going to kill me. My daughter took the decision. She said, Mum, we've got to escape. Leave. There were a few things in the house, such as a TV. We sold everything and left that evening. Manuel too opened up. He says he fled Ecuador because a drug trafficking gang wanted to recruit him and he refused. They broke into my house. They killed my pregnant wife and a friend. They wanted to kill all of us. I wasn't in the house at the time. They have three more days ahead of them to get to Panama. They have to cross streams and rivers, and along the way they see corpses of migrants who have died of exhaustion. The cartel is no longer in control. Bandits rule here. They see the corpse of a woman who has been raped and the body of a man that witnesses say was thrown from the cliff above. The journey continues with the hope that they can get through unscathed. Near the end, they come across a woman left behind by a group ahead of them. She is pregnant and cannot walk well after spraining her ankle. Some of the Haitian migrants built a stretcher for her. The journey in all takes five days on foot and a stretch at the end by canoe to get to the first village in Panama. They have made it, however, it is not over. They have another 3,000 kilometers to travel through Central America to get to their final destination, their El Dorado, the United States.